Hey everyone, I'm Mandy. I'm Ben. And this is Mandy's Mini. OSL Part 2. Today we're going to wrap up everything we're doing on OSL. Um, so these are what I consider basic techniques, glowing eyes, glowing runes, glowing swords, uh, spell effects, and your basic fire. And I get to paint my glowing eyes? And Ben gets to paint his first OSL. Stick around. It's a train wreck. Okay, so here we're going to do jack-o'-lantern. The reason that I'm showing, I want to show this one, it's a little different, is because um, instead of just using contrast of light to dark, uh, what I actually did was mix the paint so that it was desaturated. So by mixing in some gray into the orange, I was able to tone down and desaturate the orange so when I put the colors inside of it uh, they will look more vibrant and will give us the glow based on that contrast. So here I am starting with the titanium white and the reason I'm doing that is because instead of using pastel and light colored paints, I'm actually using fluorescent paints. Uh, these are Green Stuff World fluorescents and they're very translucent. If you don't have a white base, you're not really going to see the colors. Uh, they are far from opaque. And also, it is going to take several coats. But the result is pretty spectacular. Here we go with coat number two. And you can start to see that coverage showing up. Those do look super cool. Thank you. The yellow didn't even take that many coats. No, the yellow was nice and, and vibrant, uh, really right out the gate. Which is very odd for a yellow. Yeah. So the other key point on this is I wanted to make sure that all the light stayed inside um, rather than coming out from it. So I didn't do any coloring around it uh, because I did want to keep it nice and bright um, and just contained. Like the pumpkins themselves are, are glowing or possessed and not actually necessarily emitting the light. Okay, and now we're moving into green OSL, which seems to be my signature. Um, I, I just can't seem to get away from it after the Tree Lord. <laughs> That's a good magical effect. It is, and I have to say I really love how easy it is to do with Reaper's Ghost Fire. As much as I say the paint doesn't matter, because um, it, it doesn't. 
uh, but that one really does make a great glow. So I started with a dark green all the way around uh, the perimeter of the glow. Uh, that includes up his arm and on the sides where it would fit. Uh, I'm not trying to make a huge glow, so it has a smaller radius. It doesn't go up and hit his face. Um, it's not lighting the entire scene. I'm keeping it small. So, so let's say, you know, you did um, carry that darker green out further. It would just indicate a much brighter um, central color object source. Correct. Or a much darker um, general environment light. Yes. This, uh, as you can see by the paint job on the rest of the figure, which was just a very quick basic uh, covering, I was setting it in a normal everyday light. Um, it's not very dim. It, we're not in a cave or anything like that. This it, would be an example of the flashlight in the day. Correct. So again, you're still seeing the glow, but it's not overwhelming. Now because I'm doing a spell effect, it's a bigger area and it's a much more complex shape. I've actually added more colors. So I'm going to use the white, I'm going to use a light green, I use a medium green, and a dark green. Yeah, they say it's hard to uh, paint on camera. They're right. <laughs> so what you can see here is I am looking for uh, sources of in for brightness. The way the light works on a spell effect or a fire is the inside, uh, the more you get closer to the source, is brighter. The further out you get, it gets dimmer. The, the depths of the right. uh, model. Right. Okay. So where where it kind of comes in, that's where it's going to again be bright. Um, maybe not the super brightest, but it's going to be bright there as well. And the more you move out and to the top, uh, that's where it's going to get dark. So the same th sort of thing for like lava. It's brightest in the center where it's hottest and then gets darker as you go out. Right. Okay. Same thing, lava is another great glow. Okay, and then of course, finally at the top, you know, the, the best selling point is the dark green at the very tip of the effect. It lets the rest of it glow. Now we're also going to do the sword and turn it into a magic glowing sword, because why not? <laughs> so once again, I have base coated in my mid-tone. Now I'm going through and adding the dark, and that's going to be around the, the hands and the hilt. And since there's nothing blocking below it, it's also going to hit down below. On the ground on the ground, on the steps, on the skull that it's on the steps. So I'm making sure to mark those with the dark as well. Now later on you'll see me go through and fix it because I'm actually putting it in the wrong spot right now. When I started and didn't have the glow, it looked like that's where it was supposed to be. But as I went further on, I realized that it didn't look right, so I adjusted it. That's one of the key elements you want to always be utilizing. Look at your model and evaluate it as you continue, because things change as you get further in the process. Rather than just say, oh well, it's in the wrong spot, it's just paint. You can easily adjust it and fix it. All right, so uh, the center of the sword should be the brightest. So 
Um, I am just kind of working my way in with the brightness. Uh, so I started with the mid-tone, then I went to the lighter, and now I'm adding the white. And it's kind of just a stripe down the side of the white. Touch up the other tones in case it got a little too heavy and also add to the vibrancy. Okay, and what I'm doing here is adding, this is where I had fixed the base, and I'm adding a little more of the mid-tone to the um, base because as the sword is heading down towards the base, it's of course going to hit a little bit brighter. Um, so those spots would be brighter than the surrounding dark glow. but since it's still some distance, not too much. So as you can see, I keep uh, making it a little too light and then making it a little too dark and going back and forth until I get it just right, which clearly isn't yet. <laughs> Somebody's not a perfectionist, I'll really show you. And here he is, nice glowing sword and a nice glowing magic effect. Okay, so now we're going to do fire. And the fun part about fire is that uh, we're going to be taking it all the way from white into yellow and orange and red. So it's the only time that we're actually changing colors. Doing separate colors, not just different plays on the same color. Different values of the same hue. We're actually utilizing various hues. So I am starting with my light yellow. Um, so not the titanium white, but the brighter, brightest color next to the white. And again, there's no good reason for it. It's just personal preference. I find it easier to start this way, work my way up, and start placing where the colors are going to, uh, where each color is going to fall. And then going through and reinforcing that and bringing up the vibrancy of each color. And of course, adjusting as needed. So the biggest takeaway on this is it is the same steps and the same process. We're just adding extra colors. Um, so there's additional steps with those colors, but it's the same exact process. We're going from uh, light to dark, lightest in the center, um, in those uh, inner places, and then darkest at the outer edges. And we're already starting to get it to look like fire, um, not exactly glowing, uh, but it is getting closer uh, to looking like fire. And it will keep getting closer as we keep going. How much of the glow effect itself comes from 
the rest of the environment, the surrounding environment? Well, it depends on the size of the glow and the type and the model. This is actually going to be placed inside a fireplace uh, for a forge scene that we're making. And the forge uh, itself provides most of the environment that creates the glow. Uh, but again, it's that contrast. So as I'm getting these darker colors on there, the lighter colors seem brighter, and that's where the glow comes from. When it goes into that dark recess of the fireplace, it looks even stronger. Now, another thing I do want to note, this is very long, and I do apologize for that. Normally, I would cut it down like everybody else did, um, but I, it was actually requested that I show everything I do. So you are seeing every brush stroke in each of these sections. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so now I'm bringing in that bright titanium white, uh, the heavy, heavy body. Um, and you can see where that just really starts to glow against the dark colors that are already there. But uh, there, it, it's getting applied a little bit larger than it should be because again, then we're going to go over it with the other colors and keep adjusting it and changing. And by giving that light yellow a little bit more white undertone, it's going to make that seem a little bit brighter as well and help with the transition as that bright yellow hits areas that are not white underneath. Did you paint the log brown ahead of time? Yes, I did. Okay. Just like every other, uh, every other model that I've shown uh, in these processes, uh, that would be what I would consider the underpainting that needs to be done first uh, because the fire goes over the log, the fire goes over the logs. Um, so uh, that should, already be done prior to starting this. Another thing that I do want to point out uh, that you can kind of start seeing is the little embers around the logs. Um, and uh, that's just a little detail that I wanted to add. I feel like the more details you add to the model, the more interesting it becomes to look at. And I really love how those embers came out. Also, one more thing that I think that we should uh, address is uh, we promise to get better as we make more videos. Um, these are our first ones, and we are fulfilling a request by making them and how they're being made. Uh, so, 
hopefully we didn't put you to sleep too much and gave you at least some valuable information, at least a little bit, before you dozed off. And if you made it all this way, wow, thank you. Here's looking at you, Jeff. We need at least one comment. <laughs> it's all for you. Actually, Jeff was not the only person to request it. He was just the first one. He was the first one. I just want to specify because he was not the person who asked for every brush stroke. Ah. And yes, this even feels like a long time to me when I... I it didn't when I painted it, but watching it back now, man, this is long. And every single brush stroke um, is important because it adds to the vibrancy and it adds to the proper location. You know, I keep adjusting as I'm moving. So one moment the um, light colors will be sh smaller and then I make them a little bigger at the next pass or the other way around until... Uh, it actually looks like a fire to me. It's a good idea to try using reference photos or um, thinking back to any uh, camping anyone did. I actually happened to be a little bit of a pyro when I was little. Okay, and here I'm using the airbrush to actually get that environmental lighting. And I'm just using the darkest red um, it was already primed mostly black, so I am just trying to add a little bit of that red glow uh, to make sure that we can really see uh, the brightness of the yellow and white inside of it. It looks very, very pretty. Thank you. Okay, here we are, watching Ben paint his first OSL. Look away, look away now. So was it the train wreck that you were... No, not at all. It was, it was not much of a train wreck. If I had better vision, it would have been much easier. I started with my darkest red, trying to do um, the kind of outside glow type area um this figure has got a helmet with rather deep set recessed little um eyeball eye hole areas and the eye holes are it's actually one long eye slit yeah so you you really kind of got to create the separation yourself between the two eyes yeah, and I went back and forth an awful lot between the, you know, trying to get that rounded, you know, circle look. This would be me having jumped to the little bit lighter red. As far as that rounder look, you know, don't fight the model. If it doesn't have one, don't worry about it. Just cover what it does have. So just do the whole visor slit as as the... Well, what I did was I just did one half of the visor and then the other half of the visor, leaving a little empty area in the middle where the nose would be. Mm. Probably helps to have, you know, much better brush control and not be on your fifth mini. <laughs> yes, that helps a lot. <laughs> brush control is actually a very key part of painting well. And nothing you do will help other than painting more minis. You just got to keep painting and then it will come. You get used to it. You learn the brush. You learn how to move. Um, I was also having a lot of trouble getting the paint to actually flow off the brush. That means you need more water. You want more water in the brush um, before you um, actually start painting. Okay. We'll have to keep that in mind. So the best way to do that is dip your brush in your paint water. 
uh, dab it on a paper towel so that it's not dripping, then get your paint on it. Then you're gonna dab that on the paper towel again to reform your tip. So that way you're only working with the tip of the brush and um, not trying to fight a paint with a brush where the tip is gone and it's all spread out and bristles going everywhere. Okay. And this is just going back and forth, trying to get the white in the middle, not, you know, on his cheek or something like that. I dabbed the white several times and wound up on his cheek and went back over it with the lighter red. And had to go back and put it in. You know, same thing you've seen Mandy do, just a lot more times because I don't have the brush control that she has. Or the vision. That, too. Ben's actually in optometry for his p profession, and uh, that has basically allowed me access to some of the best eye doctors, and they're able to make my vision 2015, so I've got supervision. Aren't you lucky? And, of course, Ben has astigmatism, so he can't get that. At all. I can't. Now you get 2025. 20, so at best, which is not perfect. And you know, painting your fifth mini on camera, having to be in a specific place, just adds to the difficulty level. I will say that I'm happy with the way it turned out. And I'm really happy and proud of you for not giving up and just saying, eh, close enough. Well, thank you. You actually did a really good job getting it where it looks good in the end. Well, thank you. It's high praise coming from you. You act like I never give praise. I'm not saying that. I just think very highly of the praise you give. Your, your feedback means an awful lot to me. I do have to say I think that you probably did go a little too wide with your effect. Um, but that's also person a little bit of personal preference. I mean, those are some really glowing eyes. Uh, but also the uh, the other thing is with the type of helmet, um, it probably wouldn't be glowing that much out of the eyes no matter what because the helmet would be blocking a lot of it. Well. But that's extremely nitpicky. And for the level you're at, who cares? It looks great. Well, thank you. And I, I don't care what level you're at. It looks great. Well, thank you. I mean, this is a Lord Soth figure. And, you know, Lord Soth was all sorts of evil when I was, you know, a teenager. So, you know, getting to paint one of his, a model of him is pretty cool. And there you have it. And look at how much yours actually glow more than mine do. That's because of that wider area that you created. So yours look brighter. Yep. And just more intense. And that was what we were talking about earlier with, um, you know, if the how far out you go with the glow indicates how intense it is. It's a very high level of evil in Lord Soth's soul. <laughs> so, that's pretty much it for OSL, and that's going to wrap us up. Um, maybe one of these days we'll revisit it and do, you know, full model OSLs where, you know, the whole model is lit up by one or, or more source lighting uh, sections. Uh, but that's not going to be any time today or near future. I think we've had our fill of OSL for a little while. For right now. It is fun, though. It is fun. It is. And it's, a, it's, it's an amazing effect when you get it right. It looks right. great. Just remember, keep working on it and keep futzing till you get it right. And what would be awesome? Do you know what would be awesome? What would be awesome? Everybody, go out there and paint your glowing eyes and put them below in the comments.
share them with us. Let us see how uh, we were able to help you if we were. And if not, let us know. If you know any better ways of doing it, uh, let us know. Um, and we'll respond. We'll try and respond to everybody who comments. Yep. And uh, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. So and like. And like. Yes. Uh, and of course, share it if you know anyone else struggling with OSL or who might be entertained by two idiots, you know, painting OSL. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for us. So until the next one, have fun, paint minis, and we'll talk to you later. See you soon.